to the end of a narcissistic entanglement, narcissists often like to convince you that all of the problems that happened in the relationship are your fault. And this is because narcissists are incapable of accountability. So they don't have any accountability to give to you. So they must blame others for problems that happen. So understand that if you are dealing with a pathological narcissist, then you are dealing with someone that is rooted in their shame and they're unable to move past their pride. So know that in order for someone to be held accountable, then that individual must be able to let go of their pride to get to the level of courage to apologize, to take ownership for their behavior. But if you are dealing with a pathological narcissist, then narcissists believe that they are perfect and perfect people don't need to change. Hence, pride comes before the fall and they fall right back down to shame. So understand that at a consciousness level, every day a pathological narcissist wakes up, they're in shame, dysfunctional shame, pathological shame, self-esteem so low that they would probably have to look up to see it, which means that it is little to non-existent. So let's say the narcissist's self-esteem is running on like 5%. Again, low power mode, just like when your phone is running on 5% and it needs to be plugged in. So understand that narcissists exist in a self-loathing state and they use their dysfunctional pride, which is their grandiosity and their false sense of superiority to cover that pathologically low self-esteem because they don't want others to see that they are truly insecure. So understand that if at the end of that relationship, intimate relationship, or even a friendship or even a business relationship, Narcissists have to blame others for the issues that happen because they do not have accountability to give. Narcissists are stuck in the third dimension and they have been there since their childhood years because we are talking about a type of psycho-spiritual arrested development. And oftentimes at the end of these toxic relationships, it will kind of remind you of that Beyonce song that she did a while back called Irreplaceable, right? And there was a part in the song where she said, standing in the front yard telling me how I am such a fool. Talking about how I'll never ever find a man like you. I understand people, if you are dealing with a pathological narcissist, pathological narcissists are a dime, a dozen. Pathological narcissists are a dime, a dozen. They are pathological. It is patterned dysfunctional behavior. So it would be very easy to find a pathological narcissist. What is actually very hard to find are empathetic people, people that exist more towards the top of the Hawkins scale. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. And for those that are old time subscribers, then welcome back. And if you are new here, then understand that earth is 85% dark. And if you are a returning subscriber, you've probably watched that video before. Earth is 85% dark. Most of the people on this planet are unconscious. They are closer to the vibration of the pathological narcissist than they are to the top of the Hawkins scale. And you know this, for example, after the narcissistic entanglement and you're going around, you know, telling your friends and other family members and some of those friends and family members sided with the abuser over you. Well, if they sided with the narcissist, then their vibrations are closer to the narcissist. And understand if someone sides with your abuser over you, that individual is not your friend. They are your frenemy. Know that after you leave this toxic relationship with this pathological narcissist, it is important that you vet your circle. And I've done it in a previous video before. I've told you that pathological narcissists operate very similar to how cockroaches operate. And cockroaches are social animals. And guess what they call a group of cockroaches? You know how a group, you know, it's a gaggle of geese and a flock of birds. A group of cockroaches, people, is called an intrusion. 
which means that if you found one pathological narcissist in your circle, then vet the other individuals around you. And I can almost posit that you will find more because again, where you see one roach, there's a nest somewhere and you need to go find that nest and remove it because narcissists are parasites. You're dealing with someone that does not have accountability to give to you. So understand that there will be conflict in that relationship and the narcissist is not going to apologize for their behavior because they do not feel true remorse. So know that when I say that narcissists are based in their shame and they're unable to move past their pride, all of these emotions are dysfunctional. The pride is dysfunctional. It is not healthy pride like taking pride in your work like confidence. It is dysfunctional pride. It is where their grandiosity and their superiority comes from. It is where their rigid perfectionism comes from. So pathological narcissists, people believe that they are perfect. Perfect people don't make mistakes. And know that you must let go of a lower emotion to get to a higher level. One, because again, we're here to ascend, but pathological narcissists are not ascending. They are descending. They are regressing. This is why pride comes before the fall and they fall right back down to shame. And the shame is dysfunctional. Shame. Because healthy shame, having healthy shame tells me that I should not go and abuse that other person because I'm going to feel shame. So healthy shame says, hey, don't do this because you're not going to feel good when you do it. But pathological narcissists are actually running from their shame. They're not facing the shame. So they run from the shame. They get to pride. Pride comes from the fall and they fall right back down to shame. So they go through another shame pride cycle. So the shame is dysfunctional, right? And this is why they'll try to dump their deep seated inner shame onto you. And you've heard me say it before, pathological narcissists, people have a golem spirit. Gollum from the Lord of the Rings. And just like Gollum, they're going to tell you that nobody likes you. You don't have any friends. You'll never find someone like me. Just like that Beyonce song, people. The narcissist is going to tell you that something is wrong with you. Because they're trying to give you their shame. They want you to feel bad about yourself just like how they feel bad about themselves. And this is what you call projection. So Gollum hates himself. So Gollum is going to tell you that nobody likes you. You don't have any friends. You're too tall. You're too short. You're too fat. You're too skinny. Everybody hates you. Nobody loves you. That's the pathological narcissist. So when you truly understand that you are dealing with a pathological narcissist, you do not take anything that they say seriously. Because pathological narcissists are nuts, no pistachio. Nuts, no cashew. Wait a minute. Pathological narcissists are nuts, no pistachio, nuts, no cashew. You are dealing with someone with severe psycho-spiritual arrested development. And when we say psycho, then psycho is related to the psyche, that which you may also call the soul or the personality. So understand that you are dealing with someone with mental problems because they are losing their minds. Narcissists have a couple of screws loose. When it comes to their emotions, they are emotionally immature. They have emotional arrested development because they're based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. They don't have access to love. They don't have access to empathy. They don't even have access to courage. And when it comes to their will, they have an underdeveloped will. This is why they're so impulsive and compulsive. They cannot control themselves. So the entire personality is disordered. The entire psyche is disordered. The entire soul is dark. And at the core of this, again, all of this stems from the fact that they abandoned their true selves in childhood for the false self, that which you call the mask. And understand that the mask, the ego, cannot self-reflect because it is a false self. So all it's going to do is project. And what is inside of the narcissist is a whole bunch of darkness. Understand that pathological narcissist people are the walking dead. They dissociated from their true selves in 
childhood. So what you are dealing with today really is a lost soul. They are dark souls. 